In this video, we're going to explore some properties of harmonic oscillators. And we're going to do this by solving a problem that has several parts. So the problem is, um, a block is hanging from a spring, and it's oscillating up and down. And so, over here, we have our block hanging from a spring, and it's oscillating up and down along the direction of the arrow shown. The spring constant is 10 newtons per meter, and the block has a mass of 0.5 kilograms. When the block is 0.2 meters from its equilibrium position, it has a velocity of 10 meters per second. And so then, what we're going to do is try to find out three separate things about this oscillator. Number one, what is the total energy stored by the oscillator? Number two, what is the amplitude and oscillation of the oscillator, and what is its maximum velocity? And number three, if the oscillator is at its maximum positive displacement at t equals zero, where is it at t equals two seconds? And so we're going to have to solve each of these in turn, um, and finally we'll have an expression for how this oscillator behaves at any point in time, and so we can get uh, the answers to C. So let's go. So recall that at any point for simple harmonic motion we can express uh, some sort of oscillator, whether it's a spring or a pendulum or some sort of object moving uh, like within a molecular bonds potential or something like this in a very simple way and it moves sinusoidally for some you know depending on what it is it could be for a small oscillation it moves sinusoidally or in the case of a spring or a uh, pendulum in a large amplitude it moves sinusoidally and so when we do that we can express our position as a function of time as a sine wave and so in this case we're choosing to do a cosine omega t and by the way we could say a sine omega t or a sine omega t plus phi, where phi is a phase angle. And all those things would be perfectly valid representations of an oscillator, and it wouldn't change its behavior, um, except to say what, where it is at t equals zero. Now, if our position is a cosine omega, time, OT, uh, omega t, then the velocity as a function of time is just the derivative of the position as a function of time. The derivative of cosine is minus sine, so v as a function of t is minus a omega sine omega t. And then the acceleration as a function of time is just going to be dv dt, the change in velocity with time, and so it's going to be minus a omega squared cosine omega t. And from that, what we can do is write down an expression for our spring for the function uh, for kinetic energy and potential energy as a function of time. Kinetic energy is going to be one half mv squared at any point in time. And so looking at our expression above, that means that it's going to be one half m squared omega squared uh, sine squared omega t. And the potential energy of our spring at any point in time is going to be one half k x squared. And so x is it's going to be one half k, and then x squared is just a squared cosine squared omega t. And so this is all that we need to do to solve the rest of this problem. So now recall that we uh, first want to find out the total energy stored by the oscillator. And so to do that, we have to know that energy is conserved. And this is true in an undamped arm oscillator. And so that means that the total energy at any given point in time is just equal to the kinetic energy at that time plus the potential energy at that time. And so, at, and this is at any arbitrary point in time. And so what we can do is go back to the original question where we said that the kinetic energy at, at some point the block is 0.2 meters away from its equilibrium point and has a velocity of 2 meters per second. So that just means that the kinetic energy is going to be 1 half m v squared plus the kinetic uh, potential energy, which is just 1 half k x squared. So I can plug my numbers in, and this is going to be 1 half. The mass is 0.5 kilograms, and my velocity is 2 meters per second. Square that plus uh, one-half k, uh, and I'm sorry, k is going to be uh, 10 newtons per meter, and x is going to be 0.2 meters, so it's 0.2 meters quantity squared. And so then my total energy 
at any point in time when I work this out is going to be 1.2 joules. So now what we've done here is we've solved part A of our problem. I asked what the total energy stored by the oscillator is, and I've now calculated that. And the critical thing to remember again is that the total energy is just equal to the potential energy plus the kinetic energy at any given time. And what that means is that when we are at the maximum extension of the spring, when the velocity is zero, that means that it's just equal to the maximum potential energy. So that's one half Ka squared, where A is the amplitude of oscillation. And then when we're at the equilibrium position, where the potential energy is zero and the kin kinetic energy is maximum, that means that your total energy is, again, going to be equal to one half m v max squared. And so from that, we can solve our various equations. We can say, we can rearrange our expression for the total energy so that we can get A. And so just using the expressions above, I'm going to say that A is two times, you know, and we're going to call just capital E for the total energy, divided by K, and that's all to the one-half power. And that gives me my amplitude, or really my maximum amplitude of oscillation. And when I plug the numbers in, I'm going to see that this is 0.49 meters. And when I plug in for Vmax, I solve this in a similar way, and I see that it's 2 times E divided by the mass of the system, or the mass of the block, I should say, and when I plug in all of my numbers, I see that it's 2.19 meters per second. And so now what I've done is I've answered part B. I have the amplitude of oscillation of the oscillator, which is just 0.49 meters, this thing up here, and I have its maximum velocity at any given point in time. And so now what I can do is use this information, and in particular I can use the amplitude of oscillation to figure out what's going on for part C of the problem. So now we're going to solve part C. And what we're looking for now is if the oscillator is at its max positive displacement at t equals zero, where is it at t equals two seconds? And this requires us to go back to our expression for the position as a function of time. And that is going to be position as a function of time is a cosine omega t. Now recall that when we express position as a function of time, it could be a cosine omega t, or it could be a sine omega t, or it could be a sine omega t plus phi, or cosine omega t plus phi. Any of those are perfectly fine depending on the situation. And so the plus phi in those last two terms, or the last two expressions, just indicates a phase angle, which you can set to be whatever you want. Now, we know that the oscillator is at its max positive displacement at t equals zero, so the expression I've written down here is actually perfectly fine, because at t equals zero, cosine of zero is one, so our position is at its maximum positive, it's at the maximum displacement. And so I know that the amplitude of oscillation is 0.49 meters, and we did this, um, we calculated this uh, just a minute ago. And so the big question is, what is omega? And omega is the uh, frequency of oscillation in radians per second, and for a harmonic oscillator, or I'm sorry, for a spring, we know that this is just equal to k over m. And so one way to think about this, the reason that it is this expression is that the larger the, fr the spring constant, the stiffer the spring, so the stronger the restoring force from the spring, which makes the, rate, uh, the frequency higher, but then the, uh, the mass in the, do in the denominator tells me that as I have a more and more uh, massive object at the end of the spring, then our acceleration is slower, and so the uh, frequency of oscillation is also going to be slower. So what I can do is plug in the numbers that I have. So k, my spring constant, is 10 newtons per meter. My mass is 0.5 kilograms, and I take all this to the one-half power, and I find that I get 4.47 radians per second. And so now what I can do is see that my position as a function of time is just going to be, and I'll write this all out, so it's 0.49 meters times the cosine of, and I'm going to put this in big brackets, so it's 4.47 
radians per second times t. And so at t equals 2 seconds, my position at 2 seconds is just going to be minus 0.433 meters. And there you go. That's the answer to part three. Thank you.